Good morning, my dear students. Uh, today we are going to learn something about uh, the value of the microbes in the human welfare. In a stretch of studies regarding biology in the human welfare, I have been talking on the use of food production in the uplift of the human society. How the food production has resulted in the welcoming of the human society. Now, as a part of that program, in our today's class, we are going to learn something about the value of or the use of the microbes in our life. It will be divided into two lectures. First, we will learn a half of it in today's class. Now, in the broad category of organisms in human welfare, I am dividing it into higher plants and microbes. Just like uh, we are dividing it into prokaryota and eukaryota, I, for this purpose, classify the organisms into two categories, namely the use of higher organisms in human welfare and the use of microbes in human welfare. That's our concern. Now, these microbes are used for different purposes. They are used for household products, for the manufacture, for the preparation of household products, industrial products. Okay. Then, it is playing a very vital role in the sewage treatment. Then, fourth one, it helps in the biogas production. Then, biocontrolling agent, it is used. It is also used as biofertilizer. Even though the microbes are used in different more areas, they are, these are the six areas in which they find their wide application. So, it is on these six aspects I am going to discuss elaborately for you. First, we will take up the discussion on the use of uh, microbes for the household products. Then we will go to the industrial products. Like that, we will go one after another. So, first one, how the microbes are used for the household products? First one, the production of a curd from the milk. You know, milk is a, I mean, a, a nutrient, a very good food derived from the mammalian animals, starting from uh, the animals such as the cow. Even though the cow, sheep and other camel, these animals, they give milk. Man is uh, depending on the milk only from few animals, not for all, not from all animals. Okay. But all mammals are capable of uh, giving milk secretion for the young ones. So, this milk is used in different forms by the human being. They are just used as a milk, but there are so many products derived from the milk. But basically, milk is converted into curd before it is converted into other farms. And then we derive different type of uh, products from the milk. They are popularly called as dairy products or milk and milk products. Now, all these uh, milk products basically derived from the milk. They are all produced only because of their bacterial action. So, the production of a curd from the milk is done by lactobacillus and others and a group of microorganisms commonly used lactic acid bacteria. So, we use uh, lactic acid bacteria popularly called as LAB. LAB means lactic acid bacteria. It is a group of bacteria. So, these uh, um, lactic acid bacteria they are responsible for converting the milk into curd. They grow in milk and convert it to curd with increased B12 vitamin. 
So that is why they say curd is uh, better than the milk from a nutrition point of view. When a small amount of a curd is added to fresh milk as an aculum or a starter which contains the millions of lactic acid bacteria which multiply at a suitable temperature and produce acid that coagulate and partially digest milk proteins thus converting milk into curd. They occur in our stomach where they play beneficial role in checking disease causing microbes. The value of the lab it is a lactic acid bacteria. They help in converting the milk into curd. How the milk is converted into milk I have explained to you. When it is used as an inoculum, it is a producing an acid and then it helps in the coagulation and the result is the curd is produced from the milk. They are also living in our stomach ch checking the disease causing microbes. So, so many disease causing microbes are there. That is why for uh, some diseases doctors advise you to take uh, a curd milk. All, all of course along with a good amount of water. We, what we call as a mor. See this is a curd. Pure curd is a called as a thairi. This is a called as a mor. So, you can take a plenty of this uh, watery curd and it will be able to check all the many of the diseases stomach related enteric diseases ok so that is one beneficial aspect of the lactic acid bacteria curd is formed by adding small amount of a curd to milk lactic uh, lactobacillus bacteria the lactic acid bacteria present in starter multiplies in suitable temperature and converts it into milk Curd, sorry. So this is a uh, milk being converted into, and these are all. This is a diagram of the bacillus bacteria. Then the production of a food, <coughs> name, namely idli and dosa. Now by the fermentation of dough by certain bacteria, it is a uh, taking place. A food of appearance of a dough. That is what is called the batter is due to the production of a carbon dioxide. So, when you add a little bit of yeast, the, what happens it, uh, to this uh, dough, this uh, yeast, it multiplies in billions and billions and uh, uh, respiration is uh, taking place. During this respiration, carbon dioxide is released. This released carbon dioxide, when it is uh, passing through the batter, it gives a puffed appearance for the material. Okay. So, that is the reason for the puffed appearance. When you just add a dough, I mean when you add a, a yeast to the dough and then just to keep it like that. Next morning when you open it and then see the level of the dough would have become uh, raised. This is uh, because of a good amount of a carbon dioxide uh, that has been accumulated during the night time. And when you take a spoon and then stir it well, then this level will immediately go down. A very similar thing is uh, taking place in the production of the bread there, there also. So, to the dough we add the yeast. Now, what happens? Carbon dioxide is released and then this, uh, give, this gives a puffed appearance for the bread. And then when you just press the bread, it will go very slim. But it is a very, uh, I mean, it is uh, filled with air packets only because of the carbon dioxide that is produced during this fermentation reaction. So, they are fermented. Mostly they are fermented by different group of yeast. Once again, yeast is once again a group of uh, fungi. They are responsible for this uh, conversion. See, how the yeast is used in baking? You take the yeast and then mix it with the flour. Then a little bit of a sugar is added and water is added, the whole thing becomes a dough or batter. When the sugar is added to the yeast directly, it is become producing the carbon dioxide and then the dough rises because of the carbon dioxide. But of course the temperature is very much important here. If you prepare everything and then keep it inside the fridge, nothing will happen. 
and if it is also too hot it will not happen so you know all the enzymes all the enzymes not only human be the enzymes of human being mostly all the enzymes are very highly sensitive to the temperature the reaction takes place only in a very narrow range of a temperature say 5 or 6 degrees is celsius if it is going below that level that particular reaction will not take place if it is going beyond that level then also the reaction will not take place so all the enzymatic reactions in our body are highly temperature sensitive that is why when you are running temperature sometimes you start vomiting when you run when you run temperature the body temperature goes up and your enzymatic secretion is not taking place properly and there is nothing to digest your food as a result of that you start to vomiting okay so this is a yeast colony how it is see this is a yeast colony a high very highly magnified view this is a lactobacillus bacteria this is uh, see the bread how it is uh, the um, yeast is uh, uh, become yeast is uh, making the bread to become very soft and then puffed nature then we go to another useful aspect of the microorganism the production of a toddy the traditional south indian milk and others by fermentation of a plant extract when it is an animal extract you call it as a milk pal and this is south indian is a plant extract you call as a kal so this is indian milk derived from the plant origin it is of a plant origin extract of a plant of a palms by microbes production of other fruits by fermentation of fish soybean and bamboo shoots so these are also they are also becoming a very good food material sometimes a fermentation of a fish is taking place soya bean is there and then bamboo shoots are taken and then you ferment and then they are all used in the preparation of a different type of liquors then the production of a cheese this is also depending on the microbial action by different microbes giving different specific characteristic feature texture flour and taste it is one of the oldest food items by fermentation of several microbes the cheese is produced by different type of microbes several microbes are involved here and then it is um, it has got a very characteristic texture flavor and then taste that is why it has got a very good marketing value cheese is one of the best food items in our in today's market see the man <coughs> removing the palm sap from a palm tree and that will be converted into a, a, a liquor that what we popularly call as a kal and this is a taken then fermented and then this is a toddy a traditional drink of a south india made by fermentation of uh, palm sap and it is a uh, taking place by bacteria <clears throat> then swiss cheese has a large holes due to large amount of a carbon dioxide produced by a bacterium called propionibacterium shermani okay there is a bacterium involved here then Roquefort cheese, different type of cheeses are there in the market, available in the market. They are ripened by growing a specific fungus called Penicillium roqueforti. Penicillium roqueforti on them, responsible for giving them a particular flavor. the veins you see in blue cheese are the hyphae and spores of the fungus penicillium roqueforti penicillium roqueforti so these uh, lines that we are seeing the blue lines that we are seeing 
they are the penfilm. Of course, they are all edible fungi. They are not uh, disease-causing fungi. They are used in the fermentation processes. <laughs> so, in household products, what are the different uh, microorganisms we are making use of? I have given a complete uh, tabular column, which will help you to understand the things in a very easy way. So, lactic acid bacterium, it is a one, one typical bacterium coming under that category is called a bacillus. Then bread fermentation is a taking place by Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that is yeast. Then toddy is made from Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the very same yeast, which we are using for making the bread. Then cheese, different type of cheese order, as I have told you, Swiss cheese, Rockford cheese. Swiss cheese is a Propionic bacterium shermani. Rockford cheese is made with the help of a penicillium Rockford. Then fish, soya bean, bamboo shoots, they are also fermented by different groups of microorganisms. So what I have taught you so far, I was able to give you in a tabular column the different microorganisms involved in the preparation of the different food materials which we use in our day-to-day -day life. Okay, fine. So, next one we are going to the industrial use, microbes in industrial products. Production of industrial scale requires growing microbes in very large vessels, what we call as a fermenter. In our house, when the household uh, materials are being prepared, you use a very small vessel and that small vessel usually uses a fermenter. But in a large scale, in an industrial scale, fermenters are made for a particular purpose and then these are fermenters are used. So, beverages, antibiotics, chemicals, different chemicals, enzymes and other bioactive molecules. So, these are all the substances which we normally prepare or manufacture with the help of the microorganisms. Once again, I repeat, beverages. Beverages like tobacco, coffee, tea, then cocoa, all of them are manufactured only with the help of the microbes. Even leather industry is uh, making use of the microbes, but of course it is not an edible item. So, uh, coming to the edible items, the beverages, all the, be most of the beverages, they are used only with the help of the microbes. Then antibiotics are being made. Then different type of uh, chemicals, how many chemicals? They are made from the microbial action. Enzymes are being manufactured for the category. And then other bioactive molecules. So, five, I have made five classifications. Under the five groups we are going to discuss the role of microbes in the production of the food that we are using. So, see. In beverage alone, how many <coughs> beverages are there? So, this is broadly classified into non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages, a broad classification. This non-alcoholic uh, uh, beverages, it is uh, coming under, they are, they are once again non-carbonated and carbonated. Carbonated non-alcoholic, non-carbonated and non-alcoholic. So, in that category, you get uh, fruit juices, fruit drinks, and then fruit nectars, coffee, tea, etc. They are all coming under this category. So, they are, uh, they are less harmful. They are not intoxicating. They don't work on your brain. And sometimes, very rarely, you become addicted to it. That's all. And this, uh, not, in, in any way, it's not bad for our health. Most of the fruit juices, they are all very good for our health, in fact. Okay, fruit juices. So, the beverages are classified as a non-alcoholic and alcoholic. 
and in that non carbonated and carbonated these are all the non carbonated and non alcoholic food so it is a very safe to give these uh, drinks even to the children or babies of course babies you can't give these uh, to coffee and tea other fruit juices you can give okay then carbonated but non alcoholic uh, drinks they are soda water coca cola and then uh, tonic waters so these are all coming under the category of a carbonated but non alcoholic beverages when you come to the alcoholic beverages mostly they are taking place with the help of a very strong microbes and with the, you take the fruit or the sap and then you make the different one it is a non distillated you have got the wine distillated you have got the brandy then what is made from the grains you take the grains and then you soak it in water and then afterwards you either distillate it or non distillate it then you get the non distillated one is called the beer and then the distillated one the very good example is whiskey so this beautiful classification gives you about the different type of products that we are derived with the help of the microbes so to sum up alcoholic beverages are once again divided they are derived from either from the fruit or from the grains fruit once again non distillated wine and a distillated brandy is the example and from the that which are derived from the grains non distillated it is a beer and then distillated whiskey and then of course you have got some more type of liquors also rum gin vodka and different type of liquors other vodka is one which is derived from the grains particularly it is a very good russian um in alcohol russian drink it is so all these uh, <coughs> beverages are made only with the help of the microbes see the grape uh, grapes uh, how it is a grape must it is by the yeast genetic engineering by some genetic engineering procedure it is uh, um, res it becomes a responsible for diff production of a different uh, from in materials dough is being prepared bread is being manufactured wine is prepared beer is prepared and then brewers what brewers yeast is a very big classification and that we we bring, we make a different type of a, a cheese and then bread related materials okay see beverages saccharomyces cerevisiae is a commonly called as a brewers yeast the popular name is a brewers yeast this yeast is used for making bread and is employed for manufacture of a different types of uh, alcoholic uh, drinks that is uh, beer wine whiskey brandy and uh, rum depending upon the substrate the raw material whether it is a fruit juice or a grain depending on that used for fermentation and a type of a processing with or without distillation okay. so these are all some of the <coughs> once again like a wine is a prepared without a distillation it is a derived from the fruit juice beer is a prepared without distillation whiskey is a prepared with the help of a distillation of a fermented broth brandy by the distillation of a fermented broth and then rum is a prepared by distillation of a fermented broth then i am coming to the category of what is called as antibiotics one of the most significant and accidental discoveries of a 20th century which has saved millions of american soldiers and the common people is antibiotics a beautiful uh, drug invented by alexander fleming then it come the word antibiotics comes from the word anti in germany anti anti means against in german language anti means against now <coughs> in antibiotic bio means life 
bio means life so antibiotic means against the life against the life that is the meaning of that word so what do you mean by against the life antibiotic it is not against the life of the human being it is against the pathogens which are living inside the human being so when a disease is caused by the microbes the disease causing bacteria disease causing fungi when it is caused by uh, dangerous pathogens then you have to administer only the antibiotics so these antibiotics work against the pathogen and then they save the human being so they work against the life means against the disease causing pathogens or organisms they are profile for human and animals they are chemical substances produced by some microbes which can kill or retard the growth of disease producing microbes you will see the how the discovery of the penicillium was uh, accidental <clears throat> i'm just going to show it uh, by uh, a few photographies what happens uh, when fleming was cult i'm sorry culturing the <coughs> bacteria in his laboratory he was uh, growing the bacteria and you know the bacteria normally they grow in colonies they grow in colonies like this smaller colonies and larger colonies the colonies could be in any farm okay now accidentally what happened uh, a petri dish was there and by very close in proximity to this uh, bacterial culture he was having he was uh, culturing penicillium also and accidentally he just uh, uh, i mean uh, left it uncovered and this uh, penicillium was uh, producing the conidiospores it was uh, producing the conidiospores these uh, conidiospores got uh, uh, distributed or, or uh, liberated and then they came and settled on the petri dishes in which the bacteria are being cultured now he was able to notice that in a bacterial colony some areas it became completely white and then there was no bacterium at all in certain places when he analyzed he found out that the spore of a penicillium is responsible for killing the bacterium surrounding in that area so penicillin which is uh, uh, liberated or which is uh, coming out of this uh, penicillium is able to kill the bacteria which are mostly of the disease causing type so he came to that conclusion and then that was of course a yeah, greatest discovery in the human life you should say because i have already explained in another slide that it was able to uh, save so many american soldiers and then the human society penicillium was the first antibiotic which was a chance discovery alexander fleming observed that streptococci present around the mold growing in one of his unwashed culture plates could not grow it was due to chemical substance produced by the mold penicillium notatum and named it as a penicillin its a full potential as an effective antibiotic was established later by two scientists called Ernst Chain and Howard Florey these three scientists were awarded nobel prize in the year 1945 for that so they are nobel prize nobel laureates okay now the another very interesting thing is um, <coughs> why it was called a penicillium the penicillium when it is growing is a primary phyllites then this a primary phyllite will give rise to the secondary phyllites and then that will be giving rise to the conidio fourth conidio four will be coming and then conidio fours will give rise to the conidio spores and then the whole thing looks like a brush 
brush which was used for painting in those days. I have to complete the diagram. Please complete it. So it looks like exactly the brush which was used by the painters in those days. So in the German language for the painting brush there was another word called a pencil. Since this looks like a pencil, pencil means not the pencil that we are using in our today's life. Pencil is another word for the painting brushes. The painting brushes were also called as pencils. So since this looks like a pencil or a painting brush, it was called as a penicillium. See, Fleming is working in his laboratory. This is the back, I mean, culture of the bacterial colonies. Bacterial colonies are growing, and then the mold, the penicillium mold. When the penicillium mold, when the penicillium is growing in a petri dish, actually, I mean, it is in that particular petri dish, bacteria are not able to grow. This he was able to find out. See, beautiful, beautiful photography or uh, a picture of a uh, penicillium. See, this is the hyphae and then it is uh, dividing into primary phthalates, then secondary phthalates from that and then you are got the conidiospores. It will be coming up from the conidiophores. Okay. So, this whole thing exactly as I was uh, telling you looks beautifully like a painting brush. The painting brush means a penicil, so it was uh, called as a penicillium for the first time. And then they found out that it was the GNA species called a penicillium notatum. And today, the penicillin is being extracted from other I mean, species also, penicillium chrysogenum. Originally, it was taken only from notatum. Several antibiotics were purified from other microbes. See, we have got a tetracycline produced from streptomyces. And then actinobacteria, it is coming under the category called uh, actinobacteria. See? In uh, fungi, there is a category called uh, actinomycetes group, actinomycetes. And these actinomycetes group, they look like a bacteria also. So, they were called as a bacteria looking like actinomycetes were called as actinobacteria. So, streptomyces is coming under that category. Then streptomycin <coughs> is uh, taken from streptomyces gryzius. Ampicillin is uh, taken, is uh, manufactured from semi-synthetic from penicillium. And you know very well this uh, tetracycline, streptomycin and then ampicillin. All these are beautiful antibiotics. They are all life-saving drugs, life-saving drugs. The antibiotics are used to treat deadly diseases like plague, whooping cough, diphtheria, <coughs> leprosy, tuberculosis and pneumonia. So, most of them are lung related diseases, whooping cough, a deadly disease for the babies and children. Diphtheria is still another, I mean, the dangerous disease. I need not talk about leprosy, the worst disease, tuberculosis, yeah, lung disease, pneumonia, another lung disease. So most of our, most of the lung related diseases, you, we depend on these antibiotics which are derived from the fungal in origin. <coughs> then now we are coming to the, the third aspect is the production of uh, chemicals, enzymes and other bioactive molecules from the different uh, fungi. So, uh, these uh, chemicals I once again divide into different categories, organic acids. So, in organic acids, we have got the citric acid, acetic acid, butic acid and then lactic acid. So, these are all, these acids are uh, derived from Aspergillus niger. Citric acid is uh, taken from Aspergillus niger. Acetic acid from Acetobacter aceti. Butic acid from Clostridium butylicum. 
and then lactic acid from lactobacillus less, less lactobacillus now i think uh, i have given already in one of my classes how the uh, fungi or the pathogens or uh, any bacterium is uh, named see depending on the disease that it is uh, causing depending on the host that it is attacking depending on the acid that it is uh, manufactured from that so on certain uh, uh, point certain angle they are uh, the the species name is being given see the acetic acid producing bacterium is called as acetobacter acetic acetic similarly clostridium butylicum butyric acid is a preparation so it's called butylicum so uh, this uh, nomenclature rules are followed only to help the people to remember the things very easily okay then of course alcohol is being so i mean uh, made uh, with the help of the saccharomyces cerevisiae then the enzyme category in the enzyme category you have got uh, the lipases <coughs> pectinases then streptokinase these are all the substances of course the proteas also lipase is used in detergent formulation to remove the oil stains in the cloth then pectinases and the proteases these are used to clarify bottle fruit juices then streptokinase is used on patients who have myocardial infarction leading to the heart attack this is produced by streptococcus bacteria streptococcus modified by genetic engineering see these are all different enzymes now after study uh, going through this you will understand how much these bacteria have become life related for us we we are uh, not even in, they are not even a single day will be there in the life of the human being when we do not use the microbes we use it for our food we use it for our different uh, life day to day life activities you see washing the cloth we are doing everything washing the bottles washing the uh, different materials and in all these cases we use only the detergents and these detergents are nowadays made only from the different bacterial actions lipases help in the detergent formulations pectinases are used to clarify bottle fruit juices and then the streptokinin is used in the myocardial infarction so these are all once again the advantages of the microbes producing the enzymes see how it is uh, acting uh, when there is a block in the arteries when there is a block and see blocked right coronary artery when there is a block in the artery and the plaques are formed you see this is the <coughs> this is the one is a it's a lumen of the artery actually it is so big in size but because of this it has completely it is a blocking because of the formation of the fat and other um, cholesterol particles it is getting blocked and this uh, lumen in the same, it is getting narrowed as a result of that what happens the heart attack comes when the arteries are getting blocked slowly then the heart has to put more pressure for pumping the blood <coughs> okay so see it is a just a, a very simple experiment let's imagine this is the a motor uh, uh, is a pump which is used to lift the water and supply it to the different portions of the house if i am connecting this to a broader pipe then this motor will be able to pump the water very easily now if the same motor is used here 
but it has to the water has to pass through a very narrow tube means the motor has to put more strain but of course it will gain pressure in the house we put a narrow pipes because then only it will develop a pressure and then it will reach the great heights of the house fourth floor fifth floor like that if it is connected to a very i mean uh, a tube with a very broad lumen or a broad dia then there won't be any pressure yeah such a thing is a happening in our body also this is a heart it is a pumping station when it has to pass through a broad artery then it will be flowing easily if it has to pass through a normal size then also it will be passing through that with a particular pressure now if this blood has to pass through a very narrow lumen very narrow lumen then it will find it very difficult and it will put a strain on the heart and that's the reason for the development of the heart attack okay so these medicines are used to clarify or to dissolve this the controlling cholesterol with the statin tablets <clears throat> when it comes to keeping our heart healthy what foods you eat and the genes you inherit it matters so two points are very important here if you want to keep a have a healthy heart what food you eat that's very important and what genes you derive what genes you derive so first thing is what food you eat sometimes even if the food is very bad if the genes are good then it is okay so these are two things go together in making your heart weaker or stronger so what food you eat and what genes you inherit from your parents that counts good heart health also may depend on the drugs that you take several medicines are effective at um, Uh, controlling the blood cholesterol level is a key factor in good heart diseases chief among them are the statins good among them are the statins so statin tablets are very good and then they are able to prevent most of the heart diseases then some of the bioactive molecules <coughs> one of them is what is called as a cyclosporin a it is used as an immunosuppressive agent in organ transplantation patients this is produced by trichoderma polysporum it is a fungus <laughs> trichoderma polysporum statin is used as a blood cholesterol reducing agent which inhibits the enzyme responsible for synthesis of cholesterol this is produced by monoscus purpureus it is a group of the yeast monoscus purpureus it is a coming under the category of the yeast okay this is statin tablets or medicines are used for reducing the blood cholesterol note down all these points <coughs> then cyclosporin a is a producer from trichoderma and it is used for the immunosuppressive agent okay. so these are all some of the bioactive molecules that man is depending upon for his better health <coughs> so for the different industrial products that we are using in our day to day life once again i am completely summing up the whole thing the fermented products fermented beverages are made from saccharomyces cerevisiae group antibiotics are manufactured from penicillin there is a penicillium notatum is the species from which it is taken then chemicals enzymes and bio re reactive molecules also this uh, fermented products are divided into without a distillation by distillation uh, fermented broth so this uh, under this category you get the wine grape beer c 
cereals, whiskey, brandy, rum. These are all the different type of liquors that are manufactured with the help of the microbes. See the chemicals and the enzymes. <coughs> fungus, it is coming under the category called a fungus, sometimes a bacteria also. Fungus ethanol is manufactured with the help of the yeast. Citric acid by Aspergillus niger. Then bacterial action. Acetic acid is a producer by Clostridium butyricum. Lactic acid is a manufactured lactobacillus. And then, of course, uh, you have got the lipases, pectinases, steptokinases, and then the fungi. The lipases by the are used in the detergents, pectinases, and proteases in the clearing as a clearing agents. Then, steptokinase as a clot burster, blood clot burster. Then the fungus in the cyclosporin A is uh, taken from trichoderma polysporum and it is used, used as a immunosuppression. Statins are you are manufactured from monoascus purpureus, monoascus purpureus, which is a yeast, and it is used in reducing the blood cholesterol level <coughs> okay so these are all the if uh, i am able to give the whole thing to i to i was able to sum up the whole thing with the help of a single tabular column so in our today's class we were able to understand the different microorganisms used in our day to day life now by now you would have understood that they are, there is a not a single industry which has not been touched by these microbes. They are used in a very, very small level in the household or in the house. Just starting from the preparation of the curd or the dough for the preparation of idli and dosha. And in the preparation of a toddy, it is being used, it, has, it is a finding a wide application. These uh, microbes also find their wide application in the different type of industries. So, food industries and non-food industries. Non-food industries, you have got to the, I mean, these are uh, microbes used in the, the manufacture of the car industry, leather industry and other industries. All that we have not uh, discussed here. Only the <coughs> industries which are involved in directly in the food, we have discussed that is once again divided into the food and then the liquors or the different uh, uh, intoxicating substances that we man is uh, uh, consuming. Once again that is uh, divided into the fermented action, non-fermented, carbonated, non-carbonated like that we classify and then we have seen very exhaustively how the microbes could be used or utilized for the welfare of the human being in an at an industrial level so perhaps uh, this is the fourth lecture in this uh, series in the human welfare how the food the uh, the quality of the food could be introduced uh, I, we were seeing and how the microbes could play a very vital role in the increasing the type of the life or the standard of the life of a man that we are seeing one more lecture will be there in this uh, series how the microbes will be used for the man in some more areas. Thank you very much for listening to me and if you have got any doubt you can you are always welcome to raise the doubt and then you please get the doubts clarified from me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you my dear children.